It's common knowledge that making good quality handmade products is necessary for your handmade business to succeed. But turns out it's just as important to have top quality product photos as well. If your product photos look a matterish or poor quality, in other words, average, it will directly affect your conversion rate, AKA your sales. Bad photos also affect your brand image, which can impact how much your customers are willing to spend on your products, which in turn can really eat away at your profit margins. And with smartphones that take great pictures and cameras that are more and more affordable, average product photos simply aren't enough anymore. Only one problem, it can be pretty daunting to get started if you have zero experience in photography. What do you need? Where do you start? It is absolutely doable to learn how to take high quality images for your handmade products. So today I'm going to go through all the information you need in order to take top quality photos that will make your shop and products stand out. Let's dive in. Bonjour, my name is Deb and I'm the founder of Tizico, a membership community for makers and handmade shop owners just like your fabulous self. You can learn more about our community Tizit HQ via the link below this video. But for now, let's jump straight into today's conversation, how to get started with your handmade product photos. Let's start by walking through the equipment you'll need to take beautiful, impressive photos of your products. There are four things needed for your home studio, a camera, a source of light, a nice background, and an editing software. Let's start with number one, your camera. Two options here. The first is your smartphone, if it is fairly recent and has a good camera. If you're really short regarding budget, this is actually a really viable option. It won't give you as much flexibility as a DSLR camera would, but it can absolutely be enough. If you do go the smartphone route, I would suggest you do a quick search to see if your smartphone allows for manual or professional mode. And if it doesn't, for apps you can download that actually enable the manual settings when you use your phone camera, meaning that instead of just automatically picking the settings for you, you have more control over those and can use your phone almost like a real camera, adjusting things like shutter speed, aperture, and all these things I'm about to talk to you about. The second option is, as I just mentioned, a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, AKA what we think about when we think camera. When you start looking at cameras, you will see all the latest models that are really expensive and you might feel like you need to get the most current model because you don't know exactly what features you need and so the safe choice is the latest one, right? This is what most camera brands will tap into as well, making you feel as if you don't buy the latest model, you won't get very far with your pictures, that you know the camera would be too old to take good shots or, or whatever. But the truth is that you don't need to go out and buy a super expensive brand new camera. In fact, please don't. Even a five-year-old camera body will do just fine. Just make sure you buy a reputable brand like Canon, Nikon, Sony, but it does not need to be the latest model by any means. If you really want to spend money, I'd much prefer you spend it on a good lens for your camera or a second lens, but honestly, that's a bit more down the track as well. Once you've got a bit more experience, it's not necessary to get started. Save your pennies. <laughs> now, once you have a camera, you're going to hold it in your hands and go, what do I do with this thing? There's a ton of options and buttons and menus and things to click on, and it can feel pretty daunting. My advice is this, before you start taking pictures, take the time, and I know this is going to sound boring, but trust me on this, to watch an online tutorial for your specific camera model and learn how to change the settings and navigate your camera menu. Creative Live has some great camera tutorials by a photographer called John Grigo called the Fast Start Tracks, and they exist for almost every model of camera out there. I highly recommend those, and of course, I mean, there's always, well, you know, YouTube. Just search your camera model and I'm sure you'll find some great intro video to help you navigate your camera settings. It's something you will only need to do once, thankfully, but if you try and get comfortable with the settings as you're also trying to learn how to take pictures, you're really quickly going to become overwhelmed and feel like it's all too hard. My second tip here is realizing that you do not need to understand more than a few things to take really good pictures. You don't need to understand how to use the entire camera's features. In fact, there are four main concepts you need to understand to really master your product photos. The first is shutter speed. The second is aperture. The third is ISO, ISO, or maybe it's ISO, 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 ISO. These three things are known as the exposure triangle 
And the fourth thing is depth of field. Once you learn how to adjust these things, you are on your way to taking absolutely stunning product photos. I will link below to my favorite tutorials ever on this. They are from another YouTube channel called Appalaps. Only five minutes long each and super simple and clear. You'll feel like a pro in no time at all after watching them. But stay with me before you watch those as we've got a few more things to cover in this video. So last tip when it comes to mastering your camera is to spend an afternoon taking pictures with your camera without aiming to take good pictures. Bonus if you do, but it's really about taking an afternoon to play around with your camera, experiment with different you know, camera settings to get comfortable with how each affects your photos. Pure learning. It feels much less daunting than if you set the bar at, I must take great pictures for my product by tonight and it's your first time using your camera. Just plan to write off a half day just to have fun and give yourself that space to learn. Now that you've completed step one and chosen your camera and you had a fun day taking you know, practice photos and learning which buttons control what, let's talk about the other supplies you need in order to make your photos and your products look top notch. Good lighting. Lighting is a critical aspect of good photography. If you don't have good light, you won't get a good shot, no matter how fancy your camera is or what settings you use. There are two types of lights you can use, natural or artificial lighting. Let's start with natural light. Natural light, when done well, will give you the most natural looking pictures and beautiful results because it has a natural, neutral color tone. If you have a big window, a table you can put in front of it and some white cardboard to bounce the light and get rid of hard shadows, this can be a great setup for your photos. The problem with natural light is that you might not have the perfect conditions for it. Maybe you don't have the perfect window in a perfect spot in your house or the weather may be too cloudy on the day you plan to take photos. In other words, natural light is free and can be wonderful, but it also is by definition much harder to control and can change quite quickly. If you need to do a shoot over a couple of days and the weather changes, for example, the light in your photos will be different too, making it hard to take consistent shots. So for this reason, I'm starting to recommend more and more that using artificial light Lighting with the right equipment might be easier, especially if you're just starting out. The main advantage of artificial light is that you can control your environment. Weather and time of the day, they really don't matter. You can recreate the exact same light at any time on any day. This is really convenient when you need to work late, for example, or on days when the weather isn't collaborating. And it also removes the pressure of working fast to take advantage of the natural light outside before it changes. You can buy a set of two light boxes or umbrella light at a reasonable price on Amazon that will really set you up for successful photos. The ones I'm using right now cost me about 50 Australian dollars, um, so affordable. And another thing that I like is that they come in sets of two, so you can have a light on each side of your product and avoid nasty shadows without having to bounce the light using a reflector or a cardboard, which is often the case when you're using natural light. The most important thing if you use artificial light is to use the right light bulb <laughs> so that your pictures don't look too cold or blue or too warm or yellow. To replicate the neutral look of natural light, your light bulb needs to have a Kelvin temperature of 5000. Kelvin is a unit used to describe the color temperature of a light bulb. Lower numbers mean warmer, softer light, middle numbers are a neutral white, and higher numbers are a cooler, bluer light. So when you buy a light bulb, it will have the Kelvin temperature stamped on it or on the box. Look for a number followed by a K and make sure yours reads 5000 or 5500K. Now, whether you decide to use natural or artificial light, what's important to understand is the difference between direct and indirect lighting. Direct light means that the light, natural or not, hits your products directly without being reflected, bounced or filtered. It will cast hard shadows on your objects. So for example, the sun rays hitting your product directly or light from a light bulb that's not filtered through an umbrella or a softbox. That would be direct light. Indirect light means that the light isn't hitting your products directly and or that you are diffusing it through a softbox or an umbrella. If you're just starting, you will want to use indirect lighting for your product photos. Working with direct light is very tricky and although you might see some shops playing with hard shadows and direct sun rays, this is certainly not the norm nor easy to do. So sticking to indirect light is absolutely the best move here. Now let's move on to choosing your photo backdrop. There are two types of backgrounds you can use. Let's start with solid backgrounds. Most of the advice you will find out there will tell you that you need to have a white backdrop. 
it's true that in some cases it's nice to have but you can also break out of that rule and experiment with other colors as long as they work with your brand and are a nice contrast with the product you are photographing for example if you think your product would look really good on a blue background or you think that say a pink background is a great tie-in to your brand definitely experiment with it and give it a try the most important thing to remember when it comes to your background is to make it seamless which means no seams or lines are visible in the photo that way viewers don't notice the background at all the easiest way to get a seamless background is by using a single sheet of paper or a paper sweep the paper sweep is created by taking a large roll of paper elevating it and attaching it to some type of holder like an easel then letting it drop down and sweep forward onto a flat surface to create a backdrop with no creasing if your product is small you can also just use a piece of cardboard or sturdy paper whichever color you end up with if it's not white also make sure that it offers a nice contrast with your product so if you sell you know a brown leather wallet maybe don't go for a brown background something else you might want to experiment with is called a lifestyle background lifestyle backgrounds are things like wood tile basically a more textured backdrop you can buy the real thing or use extra that you have around your house or you can actually buy backdrops like this online just make sure that they are nice quality and look real because of course you don't want to have your backdrop look fake or tacky <laughs> be creative this is a great way to add a little texture to your picture if it complements your product well keyword a little texture though you don't want to go overboard and have your customers fixated on the background what's at the forefront your product needs to be where the eyes go so your background is there to support that it shouldn't be conflicting with your products and that is especially is true if you have a lot of texture or, pa or pattern on your product itself we don't want them to clash so you'll have to experiment to see what backdrops work well and I always always recommend that you ask for constructive feedback here because as with everything other people will notice things that you don't and you will end up with much better pictures if you ask for feedback along the way if you are a TZHQ member head over to our community forums and ask us for feedback on your photos you will be amazed at all the small details that we can think of to help your products photos look even better than they are now and if you're not a TZHQ member I don't know why you aren't check out the link below to learn more about our community shameless plug in the middle of the video now moving on to the last piece of the puzzle your editing software using a good photo editing app and software not only will help you make your pictures look better but will also save you a lot of time because photo apps not only allow you to touch up your pictures but also to export them in the dimensions that your platform requires my top picks are Lightroom CC for a desktop computer and Snapseed for your mobile but I would really recommend recommend watching my video about choosing the best photo app it covers even more photo editing options and I talk about the pros and cons of each one I'll put the link uh, down below this video for you to watch if you'd like so of all the things I'm telling you about product photography today this is the one I want you to pay extra special attention to times three the time you think it will take you if you are just getting started this won't be the case forever but if you're new to taking photos and you think a project will take you two hours plan for six and don't beat yourself up for it you need to embrace this learning curve it's going to take trial and error and at first you might feel really frustrated when you look at your photos and you're like that's not exactly what I wanted that's not perfect but trust me when I say this it's totally normal and it's the best way to learn just trial and error if you are new to taking photos schedule three days instead of one give yourself time to try different settings and get your photos looking just the way you want without feeling stressed about a deadline on top of it have some fun with it it's like learning to ride a bicycle once you know how it works and you have figured out the settings that work best for you it will become very quick and easy to take your pictures and you will become very very good at it remember that the time and money you invest in good product photos are so worth it because they will have a direct impact on your sales so now that you've learned how to take great product photos all that's left to learn is how to enhance your photos and edit out the tiny imperfections so your next step is to go and watch this video that's showing somewhere on the screen right now detailing my six step process for easy product photo editing it includes a free checklist to use as you edit your photos click here to watch it now somewhere on the screen don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching and until next time au revoir